Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here, enjoying my quarantine inside the cigar box guitar workshop. I have four builds going on right now. I wanted to show you what I got going on. Each one of these has got the scarf joint and the wings on the headstock. So the first one here is this H Upman box paired with this just tempered fretboard. This will be a beautiful cigar box guitar when it's done. Here's the first one. The second one, again, scarf joint with wings that are drying. This one here has got the pentatonic plus fret spacing. And this one will have a Macanudo box. I got the uh, blocks in there a drying. So that's the second one. The third one is a brick house with, this is a little bitty brick, brick house, by the way. It's a smaller one. So I paired it with a smaller 19 inch scale neck. This one here is just equal tempered. Of course, I do have the scarf joint and the wings to carve out a headstock, but this is gonna be another beauty. And last but not least, an Arturo Fuente box with an equal tempered fretboard. Of course, I do have this one here already um, ready for the embedded piezo and I'm, I'm notched out there. I do have the headstock, scarf joint, and the glue is a drying. So now I just need to hurry up and wait. All right, believe it or not, several hours have passed and I'm still under quarantine. The glue is dried on these things. And so what I wanted to do was to show you kind of different um, styles and techniques, whatever. I mean, you can carve these things however you want. Um, I have a few tricks. Um, so notice here how I glue these little, I call them wings. They're just extra pieces of wood. And actually these are come from the insert of the cigar box. And so I just, uh, I like them because they're a different color of wood. And uh, so what I do here is, and I'll show you how to do it here, but I, I cut this little wedge off right here on the bottom at an angle on both sides here at an angle like that. And what it turns up is it looks like that. You kind of see that little angle is gone here. And then I use the sander, which is over there. I'll show you exactly how to do that to kind of carve these contours and to get all of these all of these contours in here smooth. First I, I file it um, and then sand it. And then I get that uh, little um, drill bit with that. I'll show you that here in a second here, but um, that's how you transform this into this. Check it out. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these little wedgies off here. And this isn't rocket science, I'm not measuring, I'm just kinda eyeballing it and I'm using my fret saw that one was glued in there pretty good and then um, prize right off so that's step one Next, I get a file. This is just a round file. You can use any kind of file you got, right? And then I just kind of carve, make it all smooth. All smooth and curvy and voluptuous. Once these guys are smooth here with the file, or at least contoured, uh, I get the, the shinto and then I kind of attack the top here to kind of round it out. I got a long 
ways to go on that one to get it round. But the idea is that you can personalize these things here to be any size, shape, or style that you like. All right, there's got some inverted on there. You can even, you can even get these little templates here and um, get exact any style that you like. Personally, I like to just freehand it. But let me show you that drill here. Check this out. So this drill press here is basically a dedicated sanding tool. So I get these um, bits that have these little round disc, different sizes and shapes. And what I do is I put it on here and I set my table and I get my vacuum cleaner and a clamp and I kind of clamp the hose down there strategically so that the uh, the uh, dust will get sucked into the vacuum here and then I will get my victim here put the final touches on this edge here. So I'll work this thing here for about a good 15, 20 minutes and get this thing just to be like butter. Here it is. Nice and round tip. Uh, one of the things about having a scarf joint here like this is it <clears throat> means that you don't have to have any of these string tie down things or these eyelets because the uh, the angle provides the necessary angle here and you don't need to superimpose it with these things here but i did want to show you kind of various um headstocks that i've made over the years here number 94 That one just pretty. That old neck is pretty. Number four. What was I thinking? That one is the uh, mustachio. And then I have. This one here, which is very traditional. And one of my best necks ever made. This one here is just so straight. Oh my gosh. Number 65. I call this the dream sickle, but just rounded top there. And this one here, don't laugh, okay? But it's a scarf joint with no wings, and I painted it with white. And then, while it was still wet, I just put some glitter on it. Why did I do that? Who knows? This is my, uh, one of my second guitar, so. So. Headstocks are meant to be played around with. So by all means, go crazy and have fun. Be creative. See what you come up with. All right, that's it. I'll see you around.